terza fine. Ah, va bene, allora iniziamo da lei e poi di. Mr. Gillum, if uh, you had Shakespeare in your mind when you made the film, and I have another question, that there's this theme of uh, having to make choices, the tragedy of human being, and the Parnassus is tired of uh, making choices. How about you, I mean, if you can talk about this idea of uh, being have to make choices? First part's easy. I mean, I thought this, we've got uh, the Tempest, we've got Prospero, we've got King Lear, and I thought all of these elements are part of Parnassus, uh, and, and that's why we needed somebody like Christopher Plummer to take on that, that character. Uh, choice became an important thing, because I think I've gone crazy about the fact there's so much choice out there that we can have 900 different flavors of a cappuccino at Starbucks. I mean, this is ridiculous. Give me one good cappuccino, that's all I need in life. I don't need 3,000 types of toilet paper to get on with my life. It's, it's a complete nonsense illusion that we are all individuals and the great corporations are making everything for our personal, for personal needs. It's bullshit. And so I think it's time to simplify things. Just give me one good cappuccino, one three-ply toilet paper, good dog food, and I'm happy in life. <laughs> I think it's also about responsibility, too. I think people think that there's a free ride through life. Life is a difficult, dangerous, complicated business, and we should be more aware of that, and we do have to make choices, and there are repercussions if we make the wrong choice. So I think one is going to just go through life with a bit more sense of responsibility about one's own life and others around them, and, uh, and that's enough of me lecturing. Grazie per aver fatto questo film, tanto per cominciare. Poi avevo due curiosità. La prima riguarda questa presenza nella ricostruzione del monastero, questa presenza della di tanta simbologia indiana e contemporaneamente eh, invece la uh, storia, del, uh, de, 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 cioè, le storie che tengono in vita l'universo, se non ricordo male, è eh, come gli, quello degli aborigeni australiani. E allora un po' come era nata questa idea della storia che tiene in piedi il mondo. E l'altra è questa è una cosa molto personale, con lei che mi sposeranno. Io ci ho riconosciuto anche un sacco di anni 60 di Beatles, una, quella, la tenda di Mitchell Mystery Tour, insomma, eh, eh, se, se mi sono sbagliata in pieno o, o anche lei ce l'ha proprio ancora nel cuore? Well, I'm basically a product of the 60s. Yeah, no. I'm a bit of a product of the 60s when I thought the world suddenly expanded, the world imagination was alive, people were thinking, um, people were taking drugs to help them think in some cases, but uh, and it was when we discovered really uh, Indian or Eastern um, philosophies and the ways of life in the East, I mean the West knew nothing of that, we learned medicines and all this came really out of the 60s. There was also the, the sense that we could reimagine the world, make it a better place, whether it was with the civil rights movement or the anti-war movement. It was a time of you know, real excitement and I think people were incredibly alive and, and just going in so many different directions, which was to me interesting. Um, now, now, here's my memory once again, so you're beaten by life in the 60s. Storytelling, yes. Storytelling, well, you know, that's what it is. We live in a world of storytelling, and I think newspapers, I don't know if it's about journalism anymore, it's more about fiction as far as I, I think. There's so much storytelling. I find the stories are getting less interesting and more repetitive is my problem. So, uh, I, I want people to spend more time reading rather than watching television. It's as simple as that, or watching even movies. I don't really watch television or, or many movies now, but reading is still wonderful because it's the voice of a single person. It's a single view of the world, not a committee uh, ruled world, uh, rule of the world, uh, version of the world, or, um, you know, or people who are telling stories that are safe because we'll reach just 
the largest number of people and not the smartest number of people. Uh, so stories are important, both good and bad. That's what keeps us going. That's, it's really what our imagination is. If we used to tell a story, we might start going towards that. I, find, I look at movies when they, we're doing lots of science fiction work, and you look at the designs. The designs are a kind of story, and now our world begins to look like that. And it probably came from people imagining the world and telling the story of a certain kind of architecture. Um, as far as, uh, what was there's uh, more, more in there, wasn't there? Oh, I can't remember. It was the three-part question. The Indian part, yeah, oh, the Indian part, yes. That's, that was, again, a kind of a melange of uh, all the philosophies in the world. It's just partly Buddhist, it's partly this, it's partly other. It's also, our little joke is, when you hear the monks, but you don't quite hear, unless you listen, and now I'm going to tell you the story, so you can now know. It was, we invented a very strange form of Tibetan uh, Judaism. So what they're doing on their little rugs is om vai, om vai. It's so it's a, it's nobody knew that it existed, but there's uh, one of the <laughs> tribes of Israel on their way to Tibet and created this new form of Eastern, uh, Middle Eastern, Western religion. Abbiamo tempo per le ultime due domande. E ce n'era una qui.